This little component right here is a full bridge rectifier, which converts our AC mains voltage we get from our outlets into a rather bumpy DC voltage. This might sound unspectacular, but if we add a capacitor to the rectifier's output, we get a smooth DC voltage that is basically required for every modern power supply to work. So yes, full bridge rectifiers are a big deal and make our modern electronics world possible. But that doesn't mean they're perfect. They in fact come with a noticeable voltage drop, which multiplied with the flowing current equals a power loss that the rectifier dissipates in the form of heat. Needless to say, we want to keep this power loss as small as possible to increase efficiency. And that is why I was super excited to find this active rectifier board on the internet which apparently replaces the old school diodes of a full bridge rectifier with MOSFETs in order to decrease the voltage drop and thus power losses. So in this video we will not only put this pre-made active rectifier board to the test but also try to create our own DIY version in order to find out whether they are the future of rectification or whether we should stick with the old school solution instead. Let's get started! This video is sponsored by Altium. Now you might already be familiar with the Altium designer for creating schematics and PCBs, since I mentioned it once or twice before. But today I want to tell you about Altium 365, which is already integrated into the designer software and lets you easily share your designs not only with your colleagues, but basically the entire world. This way you can get feedback easily and speed up your design process. So why not give it a try for free by clicking the link in the description. First off, we need to understand how a traditional full bridge rectifier functions. As you can see in this schematic, it only consists of four diodes positioned in a particular arrangement, which I personally like to draw like this, because this way it is easier to understand. And let's imagine we got a resistive load on the outputs across which we should later get the bumpy DC voltage we saw before. And on the input we got the mains AC voltage. So how exactly do we go from this to this is the question. Well, the answer lies in the behavior of a diode, which lets current flow in only one direction and not the other. That means that when AC mains voltage is in the positive region, we got a voltage potential here which lets current flow this way. And when the AC mains voltage is in the negative region, we got the opposite voltage potential here, which this time lets current flow this way. So in both cases, a current flow through the load was possible. And what is remarkable is that the current direction was always the same, which basically means we folded over one half of the AC voltage and thus created DC. Pretty straightforward if you ask me. But the bad news is that every diode comes with a certain voltage drop, which causes the power loss I talked about at the beginning. The active rectifier idea wants to change that by replacing the diodes with MOSFET switches, that come with super low resistances and thus should decrease the power losses. Only problem is that MOSFETs are not exactly diodes even though they come with a body diode that also only allows one current path direction. But using the body diode is not the goal, since its voltage drop is also rather high. No, we want to apply a DC voltage to the MOSFET's gate in order to properly turn it on. So for full bridge rectifier we would need some kind of circuitry that detects when the AC voltage is either positive or negative, and depending on that only turns on the two MOSFETs diagonally to one another to mimic the functionality of a full bridge rectifier. Good timing is also key here, because if just one additional MOSFET is on at any point, we basically got a short circuit. And that is exactly why I was rather happy that I didn't have to design such a circuit myself, because I found the TEA2206 and TEA2208 IC on the internet. They are active bridge rectifier controllers, 
and can do what I just described by utilizing their built-in comparators and MOSFET drivers. So according to their typical application schematic, there is not much I have to add to the ICs to create an active rectifier, just some MOSFETs and capacitors. And in case you're wondering, the 2206 one only replaces the lower side diodes with MOSFETs, while the 2208 one replaces them all. Which begs the question why I even got the 2206 version if it only does half the job of lowering the power losses. Well, the reason is that I got my hands on a development board around it, which I can use to get my feet wet, since it should be functional, right? To safely try it out, I utilized my small auto transformer to decrease the mains voltage to 25 volts AC RMS, which I directly hooked up to the active rectifier. And as you can see on the oscilloscope, it does seem to work just fine. Awesome! That means it was time for the first efficiency tests slash comparisons, which I performed by adding a capacitor bank to the rectifier's outputs, as well as a constant load, and then drawing varying constant current with it while measuring how much input power that required. Of course, to get accurate values on the output side, I also utilized my multimeter to precisely measure the current, and my oscilloscope to get the RMS voltage value. After that was done, I replaced the active rectifier with a normal full bridge rectifier and basically repeated this test in order to find out that the average efficiency was bumped up around 2 to 4% with the active version. Not bad. But of course, next I want to replace all the diodes to increase the efficiency even more. To do that, I soldered the TEA 2208IC to breakout boards and afterwards to a perf board to which I then added the four MOSFETs and some capacitors, pretty much like the typical application schematic recommended me to do. The results didn't look half bad, but I was still very nervous while doing the first test with lowered mains voltage. But as you can see on the oscilloscope, this active rectifier also seems to work just fine, at least with resistive loads. Because while trying to charge up the capacitor bank for the power test, there appeared to be some sort of short circuit problem with the rectifier. Not sure if my design with the low cost high resistance MOSFETs is the problem, or whether the topology and IC can generally not handle capacitive loads, because the datasheet also states that a boost type power factor circuit must follow the application, which more or less prevents current surges from capacitors. The circuit does however work just fine with, like I said, resistive loads. But due to obvious safety concerns, I really didn't want to include it in the next mains voltage power supply test, in which I basically measured the efficiency of a common switch mode power supply before and after implementing an active rectifier. The only thing though that helped me back once again was a familiar sentence in the TEA2206 datasheet that states that it is intended for applications followed by a PFC. And since such a power factor circuit got mentioned twice now, let me tell you that it basically prevents that mains current only gets drawn near the peak of the AC mains voltage. Instead it distributes the current draw evenly across the whole sinusoidal voltage, but more about that topic in another video. The only problem was that pretty much all of my power supplies didn't come with this feature, except of course one that I need to charge my newest laptop. And I decided to not sacrifice it for this video, which is why I pushed my luck and tried it with this a bit nicer power supply that not only comes with less sharp current surges, but also some filters on its inputs. So after doing the usual power measurement test with it, I desoldered its original full bridge rectifier and simply replaced it with the leads of the active rectifier boards. And luckily nothing exploded after the power up and everything worked perfectly fine, so that I could do all the measurements. Now the final results tell us that the active rectifier is once again more efficient, but this time only with a difference of around 0.2 to a maximum of 0.9%. The reason is that due to the higher mains voltage level of 230 volts that gets transformed down, 
there's only a small current flowing through the rectifier, which does not create that big of a power loss and thus is not that important for the efficiency. But if we got a low voltage, high current system without transformation, then a better rectifier is definitely recommended, as we proved in test 1 of this video. So in conclusion, the old school full bridge rectifier is definitely good enough for most of the mains voltage rectification, because it is cheap, rigid and efficient enough for this task. With that being said, I hope you learned something new through this video and now understand the advantages and disadvantages of active rectifiers. If so, consider supporting me through Patreon. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time.